Another day, another commitment for Kirby Smart, Stacey Searles, and the Georgia Bulldogs who are on an absolute run right now on the recruiting trail. This time it's Marquise Easley, one of the top offensive tackle prospects in the country out of the Chicago area, Kanaki High School. Uh, big time deal. Georgia was able to land his commitment over schools like Tennessee, Alabama, Oklahoma, Michigan, Nebraska. I mean, there were a lot of programs that wanted this kid and for good reason too. Now, uh, again, this is the fourth offensive lineman that Stacey Searles has landed since June 30th. They had Michael Uini. He had uh, Daniel Calhoun. Nair Daniels committed to Georgia yesterday. And now Marquise Easley gives Georgia six offensive linemen in this 2024 class, a massive number. And this is a massive dude. And uh, real quick, before I break down what he brings to the table, I have to give Stacey Searles some credit, man. A lot of people were not super excited or thrilled that Kirby Smart hired him after guys like Sam Pittman, who was an A-plus offensive line coach and ace recruiter. Matt Luke, who had head coach experience at Ole Miss, he did a great job. But Stacey Searles has come in and added some beef, man. These are some big time pops, heavy dudes that are going to be signing with Georgia in this 2024 class. Let's break down some heights and weights real quick before I get into Marquis Easley and what he's going to bring to the table because I love everything uh, about him when I watch this film. But Michael Uini, 6'7", 335. That is a big time, heavy, athletic offensive tackle that they got out of Texas. You have Nair Daniels, who is at 6'8", 370. Are you kidding me? If it doesn't work out for him in the NFL, that dude could be a professional wrestler. I mean, that is big show undertaker size right there. Uh, and he is only going to get stronger and trim out. But 6'8", 370, are you kidding me? Um, Marcus Harrison, 6'7", 335. Daniel Calhoun, 6'6", he told me 350. Uh, and then Malachi Tolliver, of course, 6'5", 315. These are some big, heavy dudes. But at the same time, you got to be able to move. Uh, if you can't move and show some athleticism, for that size, you're not going to be recruited to play a Georgian. All these guys can move, and that's what impresses me the most about Marquis Easley. You know, especially in the run game, he plays left tackle. But when he, you know, gets around there um, and goes to the right side and and the run game, when he's pulling and opening up those running lanes, dude turns into a freight train. And if you're a linebacker or anyone who's getting in the way of that guy, you're going to be flown backwards five, ten yards. Uh, this guy moves incredibly well for someone again. Uh, 345 pounds is what he's listed at. Um, just not a lot of guys who can move that well and show burst. I mean, he's quick off the snap and, you know, he's getting after it. And when he gets downhill and looks for someone at the second level to block, uh, you're in big trouble. And he is physical. Uh, I think he's got great footwork. Uh, there's a lot to like about his game and he's been high on George's board for a long, long time now. And they were able to land him. And Stacey Searles has landed just about everyone that he's really targeted in this class. I think you have to give him an A, maybe an A plus uh, in this class. I mean, he's got multiple, four tackles right now. I think Daniel Calhoun is going to slide in and play guard. I think Malachi Tolliver is going to slide in and play guard. Maybe Marquis Easley gets a look at guard as well. Nair Daniels is massive. I mean, he's Xavier Trust, Devin Willick size. Maybe he gets a look at guard. But you're getting some big, versatile linemen who can really move. Marquis Easley ranked as the number 18 overall offensive tackle prospect in the country. And when you watch that film, it's hard to imagine there are 17 offensive tackles better than him. He's the number five player in Illinois, number 242 prospect uh, overall in the country. So a big, big deal. I've been told that they were only going to take five offensive linemen. That's the number on the offensive line every class from what I've been told. They've got six right now, so we'll see if one of these guys decides to open things up. And that would help Georgia in next year's class. I've said this multiple times. 2025 on the offensive line, especially in the state of Georgia, is unbelievable. I've said multiple times in 2024 that I don't know if there's a guy like Andrew Thomas or Broderick Jones or even Amari Mims. I don't know if there's one of those guys. There definitely is not in the state. But even across the country, I don't know if there's an elite top 10, top 15 pick on the offensive line. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe one of these heavy big dudes, because again, you can't teach size, but you can teach a big guy new tricks and develop him, right? Maybe someone turns into that type of player, but I don't see it right now. That 2025 class, I love multiple players. Uh, David Sanders Jr. out of Charlotte. Um, 
I, I've been told that someone very close to the Georgia program thinks he's the number one player in the country. He's lean, uh, like 285, 6'6", moves extremely well, moves like a tight end, but knows how to block. He is an elite, elite player. I love Juan Gaston Jr. out of Westlake High School. He's another guy. He's like 6'6", 350, but maybe he's not 350, but close to it. He might be 340. Sure doesn't look like it. He is athletic as it gets at 340 pounds. His dad was an absolute baller basketball player at Georgia Tech. Juan Gaston Jr., I think is a borderline five-star. I think uh, the rest of the industry is sleeping on him. Um, Josh Petty out of Roswell. He's another lean, impressive-looking offensive tackle who could push for five-star status. Mason Short is currently committed to Alabama. I think George is going to still you know, push for him. Dontrell Glover, uh, big-time tackle, committed to Alabama. And Langston Hughes. They won the state championship last year. He was a big reason why, protecting Prentice Nolan, the big-time quarterback who's committed to Ohio State. But overall, I, if Georgia gets their guys in 2025, that could be the best offensive line class we've ever seen Georgia sign. But we're talking about the 2024 right now. They've got six on board. Marquise Easley is the newest one. And I spoke with his coach last week. I said, you know, Coach, um, what does he bring to the table? We know he's big, right? He has 6'6", six, six, uh, six, Seven, no, he's six five. Excuse me. Um, I don't know him personally, so I, I got to back. You know, look at where other people have him as a height and weight type of deal. But he's six five, three forty five. That's what he's listed as. And I said, outside of his, you know, massive frame and his size, what makes him one of the top offensive line prospects in the country? What makes him special? He said this. He's special for exactly what you mentioned earlier with his size. But what separates him from others I have seen is his ability to move. At his frame and his willingness to learn, he is consistently the first person to ask legitimate questions and then take hard coaching for his betterment. He has done a great job responding to adversity during competition this far. Um, you can tell him you can tell him one technical coaching point, and he will immediately put it to action. Marquise already knows our playbook, including our passing game, which speaks volumes to the type of kid he is. Large heart who wants his teammates to learn and grow with him. And I said, Coach, you know. If, you're being recruited to play at Georgia. You have to be able to work. You have to be able to beat. You have to be able to win. You have to give it 100%. Georgia's not for everyone. I've made that video um, in the past. If you want to come to Georgia, you better be able to work. You have to have a strong work ethic. And he said that's exactly what Marquis Easley brings to the table. He wants to compete. He wants to grow and get better. He wants to work uh, and be the best player that he can be. And that was a big reason why he chose Georgia because he knows that they were going to push him as hard as anyone in the country, and they're going to get the best out of him. And he knows that Georgia can bring that out of him. He knows what Stacey Searles has done, putting guys in the league no matter where he's coached at. And he knows that Georgia has had the best offensive line in college football the last two years. Before I keep going, again, I should have mentioned this earlier, but once I get on these runs, I keep going. But make sure you pick up uh, Double Dogs, Dog Struction, sign up to the newsletter. Um, yeah, I know it's July, I know it's the off season, but... I hope y'all signed up to the newsletter weeks ago so y'all get all this recruiting scoop that I've been um, dishing out. Um, we've been pumping out team content as well. Not easy to do this time of the year, but um, SEC Media Days are coming up. I'm going to be hitting up high school practices shortly after that. Uh, the high school season will be here before you know it. We're going to have Dylan Riola highlights just about every week. We plan to be there and watch him play at Buford High School more than anyone else uh, more than our competitors. That's, you know, our goal. We want to have someone there at every game. So make sure you are, um, uh, you know, watching our videos. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed to Dog Post so you don't miss any of the great high school content that we're going to be having, uh, recruiting content, team content. We're going to have that all flowing. And all this is right around the corner. After SEC Media Days, high school football gets going, fall camp gets going. And the season's going to be here before you know it. So make sure you're signed up to the newsletter uh, so you don't miss any of uh, the content that we've got coming through. But this is another big-time prospect, big-time pull for Stacey Searles, who, again, has done an excellent job in this class. A lot of people doubted him. And I know he had to jump through some hurdles to get these guys because um, a lot of these players are all about NIL. And Stacey Searles has said, you know, you might get better deals or been told better deals at other programs, but here's what we can do for you. We can develop you and get you to the league and you can start making that big boy money. Um, it's nice to make some money in college right now, but if you come to Georgia, you're going to be making millions in just a few short years. 
And a lot of these guys are buying in. They said, you know what? I want to be a part of this. I want to block for a guy like Ryan Puglisi, Dylan Raiola. I want to block for these running backs that Georgia has coming in. I want to win championships. I want to get better and I want to be developed. I want to go to the league and make millions of dollars. And these offensive linemen, all six of them, especially these last four that have uh, committed in the last you know week and a half, they get that and they understand that. And they said, you know what? I'm done. I want to be at Georgia. I want to be a bulldog and I want to be the best player that I can be. So big time commitment, four star Marquis easily gives Georgia 26, 26 commitments. And there are still plenty of targets out there. I've said for a while, this is going to be the number one class in the country. And uh, they're making me look smart. Uh, but again, I said that months and months and months ago. If y'all have been listening to this channel, y'all know that this is not a surprise to you one bit. Uh, thanks for watching this video. As always, I'll see you hopefully over on Dog Post.